Hey, I'm Peter Lucas, and this is my magazine, Crossfade. Right, and as I'm so clever, everything fades in in this presentation. Okay, so we're going to start off with a nice, uh, sort of, slow merging uh, thing about the construction of my front cover. Uh, there we go. So, start off with a nice picture of myself nice and big in the corner. This is going to be the uh, lead image uh, for the lead article. And then I sort of thought, well, that's not really enough, and it's, it's kind of bright. So I sort of messed around with some effects and got a nice darker version, and then uh, put it in the corner. And here's, here's the masthead, nice at the top. It's not too thick, but it's wide. Um, so it, it sort of works, and uh, contrasting colours of the, the white against the black. And here's my logo right at the top. Um, nice, basic. It's the only magazine you'll ever need. Um, here's all the sort of the uh, the website and the, the issue, what uh, what uh, year it was, and then the barcode and the price in the corner there. Let me start with some cover lines. Here's the, the lead article, uh, sort of just overlapping with the lead image. And then some more cover lines, some main cells. And uh, that's, that's it for the front cover. It's uh, quite minimalistic, there's not much to it. But I, I quite like the style. And now I'm going to have the contents page. And here at the top, I've uh, got obviously crossfader again and then contents and I, I don't know how but I've somehow managed to make it look like back to the future and uh, here we have another picture of myself up in the corner uh, taking up most of the page as the lead image and lead article and then we have the page number and uh, the again the white against the black sort of overlaying with the image and then uh, some more contents in the same sort of style, a bit tumbling down to the bottom. And then I thought I needed a few more pictures, so I uh, got some from an earlier sort of photo shoot and tried to get them to overlap with this, uh, this article here to show that uh, they're in that band. Here is uh, the double page spread um, of, again, a massive picture of myself. And um, there's actually some clever editing in this picture because it actually ended about sort of here. And then we cut this again and put it back on, but it's not very noticeable, which is very nice. So it looks a nice perspective shot. And then the uh, title of the lead article, uh, just under my face. And uh, so here's the double plate spread. And I start off with some uh, a little crossfader up there in the... Uh, the page number, and then we have two mysterious blocks, which will be for my interview that I have, again keeping the style of the white on the black background, and then there's a little bit of extra information about the artist, and I think you can't really read it, it's quite a small font, and then we have a nice pull quote right at the top there, from the uh, taken from the article, again in the style of the magazine. And then we have the conventions of media. And I think my magazine uh, uses and develops on the uh, on conventions because the layout, it's sort of, you can see that it's a magazine, it's got the masthead right at the top and the lead image taking up most of the screen. But it's quite minimalistic, so it's uh, not quite uh, a normal magazine. Um, because of the way it's, uh, yeah, it's presented, the minimalistic uh, way the articles are set out. It's got all the information there, it's just sort of nice and plain and obvious. And then we have uh, the representations uh, that I conveyed in my magazine. Now I did this of, of my artists, and uh, so we've got the, the lead artist uh, of myself, who is uh, portrayed as quite a serious character and suggests we might, we might be fearful of this person um, due to the, the lack of emotion and uh, suggesting power and importance. Um, 
Though on reading the interview, it sort of humanizes the, uh, the artist a bit and shows that he is a real person and he has emotions. And, uh, and they get a little insight into the artist's life. So there's a nice contrast. Here we have uh, how it would be distributed. And I've chosen uh, Bow Media uh, if I was to actually create this because they're quite a, a well known sort of magazine brand. They've got a number of different magazines. And I think this would increase the notoriety of my magazine and overall make nice lots of money. Um, so the audience for my magazine. Uh, I sort of intended it for quite a widespread audience of about 18 to 13 year old males who are interested in sort of dance music and electronic music. And it's more aimed towards the production aspect of the music as opposed to the life of the artists. Um, or live music. So it could be targeting people who work with music or work in the music industry. Um, here are the technologies that I've uh, sort of learned about. I've increased my skills in Photoshop as I could sort of use it before. And I've uh, learned about photo shoots and what are good um, sort of good pictures to use. And one of my favourite effects now is Gaussian Blur, which is, was on the uh, front page, which uh, gives it a nice sort of dark feel, but it's still, you can see some light. Um, I also used a website called SurveyMonkey to create surveys to learn more about my target audience and what they want from a magazine. And here we go, here's the, the preliminary task I did. And there it is, that's my student magazine I did. Oh dear. Um, here is, yes, my college student magazine. It's a, it's a bit sort of basic um, and a bit sort of cluttered. And there's, uh, I don't know why this is down there. Um, uh, personally, I believe my skills have progressed considerably. Um, and personally, I, I think I made a bad choice of the image there as I'm, I'm quite far away and it's, I'm in the top left corner, which should be sort of lead articles. And I think, yes, that is it. Any questions? Thanks very much for that, Peter. Uh, good presentation. Um, again, the uh, what, what, what was the response of the magazine from from the... Ah, yes. Um, well, there, there's uh, quite a remarkable... That I only really got my tight audience from when I put it out on Facebook. I got sort of a lot of males, sort of 18 to about 24. And uh, they said they liked the sort of dark style of my magazine, but, but they did think it was a bit too minimalistic. I could have had a bit more information in there. So I may have sort of, it looked a bit empty sometimes, especially the contents page, there wasn't too much on it. In terms of your audience response, what was the male-female split? I think it was about 80 to 20%. Okay, the 20% of, of, of women. Did do they think this magazine was also aimed at them, or do they think it was predominantly uh, no, a male I think orientated magazine? Yeah, I think they, they agreed it was quite a male magazine, but then there's, um, they did say, like some of them said they would read it, even though it was still sort of targeted towards men. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.